Well, hello everyone. I hope you're all keeping well and safe. I've noticed over the last week or so that there's been a dramatic boom in amateur astronomy. Judging by the amount of PMs and emails I'm getting to my website, through Facebook, and from what I'm seeing in other people's profiles, which is fantastic to see. It seems a lot of people are buying their very first telescopes, and they're also wanting to learn what's available in the night sky for them to see from their backyards. And why not? It's actually a great idea to get introduced to nature and to astronomy, because astronomy can be done from anywhere, from your backyard, your front yard, from the countryside. It's, it, the stars are always there, they're available to you. On, the, on that subject matter, with tonight, uh, um, tomorrow night, April 21st into the morning of the 22nd, is the first major meteor shower of the year. There are a number of major meteor showers throughout each year, ranging from the Lyrids in April through to the Perseids in August, of course the Leonids in uh, November, the Geminids in December, and to a certain extent the Taurids and the Ursids. But the, but the April Lyrids are the first major meteor shower of the year. There's a lot of hype about it going around on social media at the minute, uh, through various pages and through media sources such as the newspapers, etc. You know who I'm talking about. There's a lot of misinformation, a lot of disinformation. Some of it's accidental and some of it's on purpose to sell papers and to increase likes. I'm going to set the record straight, tell you what, exactly what's going to happen. So, the Lyrid Meteor Shower peaks every year on the night of April 21st into the morning of April 22nd. That's Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. The Meteor Shower is named after the constellation of Lyra, the Harp, where the, the radiant of the Meteor Shower appear, uh, originates from. The radiant is located near the bright naked eye star Vega between the constellation of Lyra and Hercules. Vega is unmistakable. It's a very bright naked eye star. You can see it. And the evening sky as it gets dark rising in the northeast. Um, it's also the famous star from the movie Contact and the book by Carl Sagan. Uh, that's an R story. So Vega's unmissable. The Lyrid meteor shower mirrors appear to radiate from a point to the right of that star. During the course of the night, the radiant will climb higher and higher as the Earth rotates. Meteor shower rates tend to increase as the radiant reaches its highest point in the sky, which also coincides with the maximum period or the maximum uh, peak of the meteor shower itself. And this year, it appears to be around 6 7 a.m. or so on the morning of Tuesday, April 22nd, which means observing on the peak night of the 21st is, full, is the main time to be doing it, and even the following evening is perfectly suitable too. However, the Lyrids are not a major meteor shower. I'm seeing newspaper sources quoting hundreds of meteors per hour. Meteor shower can light up the night sky. Uh, this is not going to happen. That's not the way a meteor shower work. Those kind of meteor showers are very rare. The Lyrids have a peak. They call it a ZHR, a zenith, zenithal hourly rate. As the zenithal hourly rate of the Lyrids is approximately 15 to 19, 20 meteors per hour at best, not hundreds per hour, so 15 per hour at best. So that me means you may only see 15 meteors per hour, however in reality you'll actually see less than this. The zenithal early rate is based on the radiant being located at a theoretical position which is directly overhead for everyone from a dark country sky with stars visible to magnitude 6. In reality, most people won't have that quality of sky, especially if they live near towns or especially near cities. And also the radiant is never directly overhead. So the actual amount of light rays you will see per hour will be less than 15. But that's okay. Even though the shore is not famous for its high rates, you will see regular meteors from it if you're vigilant. And the meteors tend to be fast and occasionally they could even become bright enough to uh, startle <laughs> new observers. Some meteors may become fireballs. Fireballs are any meteor which is brighter than the planet Venus. Um, now is the perfect time to get that visual reference into your mind to help you with future observations because at the moment in the west you see behind me at the window that sky, twilight sky, just above the frame there's a bright star visible in the evening sky. Every evening in the west you can't miss it, it's unmistakable. It's the brightest object in the night sky when the moon is not visible, and that is planet Venus. 
that's our reference point. Planet Venus, when it's at its most brilliant, is about magnitude minus 4.5, minus 5, depending on, on, the, on the situation. So if you see any meteor brighter than planet Venus, then technically it's termed a fireball. Fireballs can range in brightness dramatically. The minimum criteria is of course Venus, however some of them can surpass the brightness of the full moon and even brighter. These are rare events. There's always a chance of seeing a fireball during any of the major meteor showers during the year. If you see a fireball, you can count yourself very lucky indeed. They are not common, they are quite rare, they happen at random, it's impossible to predict. However, just watching the Lyrids, watching any meteor shower, even ones with slow rates, enjoying the night sky has a perfect way to maybe perhaps get lucky and accidentally see a fireball. If you witness one, you'll never forget it and perhaps you'll be hooked on meteor showers for the rest of your life. Some fireballs exhibit smoke trains or ion trains, residue which leaves behind a persistent glow in the sky among the stars for seconds or even minutes afterwards. Some of them uh, have different colours. Some are green, some are brilliant silver white. And on rare occasions, very rare occasions, and this subject is, is a, a hot subject, but it's, been un, it's not unheard of for some people to have heard audio phenomena from very bright fireballs. I can put myself in that category. On several occasions in the past I have heard audio phenomena, I've heard sound effects from fireball events such as sizz sizzling sounds and sonic booms. But do not expect that on your first night of meteor watching. You, that could happen any night and that's, that's the trophy, that's the ultimate experience from any meteor shower. So the Lyrids come from comets. Many meteor showers, meteors for example, come from defunct comets, sorry, defunct comets, mature comets or defunct asteroids. The Lyrids come from Comet Thatcher. So what you're seeing is the Earth ploughing through the debris trail from the tail of Comet Thatcher from the past. So you're watching these meteors burn up in the atmosphere at perhaps, I forget the velocity, but they're very high velocity. This is a good opportunity for me to explain something else to you about terminology. And there's some confusion online between what a meteor is and what a meteoroid is and what a meteorite is. I thought I would clarify this and clear this up now because it's very useful if you're new to the subject. A meteoroid is the actual, think of it as a tiny asteroid. The meteoroid is a tiny particle of dust or rock or iron that's, that's moving through space around the sun among the planets. That's the actual object itself that's part of the meteoroid trail. It's a meteoroid. When the meteoroid enters the Earth's atmosphere, it burns up at high velocity into incandescence and flares up producing this display of light which we call a meteor. A meteor is an event happening. If a meteoroid survives through the atmosphere and lands on the Earth, it's called a meteorite. So the three are all interconnected but different. So you get a meteoroid transitioning into a meteor. On rare occasions, the meteoroid will survive and become a meteorite when it falls to the ground and people recover these objects. So that's the terminology. So if you hear anyone saying the meteorite shower last night was great, they're wrong. It's the meteor shower. So I hope that explains that one. Also, um, for observing the Lyrids, you want to be comfortable. You want to wrap up warm. Even though it's getting milder this time of year, the nights are still cool. So wrap up warm with several layers of clothing. Watch for La Vega rising in the northeast. Turn your back to Vega. The actual best place for watching meteors is away from the from the radiant. Perhaps 40, 50, 60 degrees away from the radiant in the opposite part of the sky. Relax. Let your eyes get dark adapted. Let the sensitive rods in your eyes, the pigmentation change to your eyes become very sensitive to the dark. And that process can take 15, 20 minutes. Don't use your mobile phone, don't be looking at Facebook text messages when you're watching a meteor shower. Turn the phone off or put on a dim setting, put it in your pocket and adapt to the night sky. The more you adapt, the fainter stars you're going to see and the fainter meteors you'll see. Get comfortable, relax, stay warm. You can do, meteor showers are great because you can, do, you can watch a meteor shower on your own or you can watch it with a, a partner, a friend or even the entire family out in the backyard. 
No telescopes are required, no binoculars are required, so it's a fun, easy activity to do. If you do see a meteor, all you have to do is backtrack its path through the sky. If you see a meteor burning up in the west, for example, backtrack it in your imagination and see where it came from. If it appeared to have come from the direction of Vega, then you've just seen a lyrid meteor. There will be other meteors too at random in the sky, it belong to minor showers and sporadics. They're not associated with the lyrids, but you want to be focusing on the lyrids. So what you can do as a project is see how many you see per hour. If it's a completely clear sky, excuse, excuse me, I'm on the tee. If it's a completely clear sky, the rate should increase throughout the night into the early hours of the morning before dawn as the rating gets higher. It's a joyful, easy, fun experience and a good, good way to get introduced to the night sky and to astronomy and to the, and, uh, the passion and science of meteors. If you're into photography, meteor, meteor shower photography can be interesting. Don't expect to catch a fireball on camera or a bright meteor so soon. It's, it's quite difficult, but it's a fun project to do and you could get rewarded. Set up a wide field lens, such as your, if you've got a kit lens is all you have, 18mm, then fine, use it. If you have a wider lens, such as a 15mm, 10mm, even better. Open the aperture wide open to f2.8, f3.5, whatever the widest setting is on your lens, which is the smallest number. Choose a shutter speed of perhaps 25 to 30 seconds, and an ISO that suits your environment. If you're in a dark sky, ISO 1600, uh, perhaps even 6400 or higher, if you're in a moderately light polluted area, you might want to drop the ISO down a little bit or reduce the exposure, just enough to catch the stars properly without burning the, the frame out with light pollution glow. You will find that happy medium pretty quickly by experimenting. Then put in, use the continuous shooting mode in your camera, the cable release and take consecutive images with that. If you take a 30 second exposure for example, take one 30 second exposure, take another 30 second exposure, and let the camera continuously do that until you run out of battery or until it clouds over. Then the next day begins the tedious process, but fun process of going through your individual images and checking to see if you caught a meteor. It's, it's helpful if you're watching the sky with the camera. Don't go in and watch TV for two hours and leave your camera outside, because then you have to go through all your files the next day looking for a meteor. And if you do see one, you may not know, was it a library and you may not know was it a meteor at all. There are many faint satellites which pass the sky every night especially two hours after sunset and before dawn and some of these can catch the, the, the um, untrained eye off guard and mistakenly think they've got a meteor. So what you can do is set the camera up, do a patrol, pick your area of sky. My advice would be to watch with the naked eye first for a while and see if there's an area which seems to favour activity. If there is, pick that area, turn the camera in that direction and begin your meteor patrol. Watch the area of sky, your camera is covering, don't take your eyes off it, focus on that and if you do see a bright meteor then you'll know to check your images the next day, that makes your job a lot easier. And the good thing about it is you can stack the images together the next day and make a star trail out of those frames, whether you get a meteor or not, or you could even make a time lapse movie out of it. The time lapse movie of the stars moving across the sky is seen from your backyard during lockdown. It's an art great project. But anyway, I hope you enjoy this video, I hope you find it useful. Uh, enjoy the meteor shower, don't get your uh, expectations too high for high rates, but they are meteors, they are fun to watch and you never know what you're going to see. Use the opportunity to enjoy the night sky, learn a few bright stars, perhaps learn your first constellation while you're in the process. And if you are looking at a star chart or a book or a planisphere showing you the sky, make sure to put a red bit of tape or a label around one of your torches or your head torch that way you can preserve your dark adaption and see what you're doing at the same time. Don't use a bright light and, and try to avoid using your phone. So enjoy the shower and I hope you have a good time out in nature and if you don't see anything tonight and it's clear the following night, go out again and try. You never know what you're going to see and those fireballs are sneaky, they can appear any time. And it's the lure of those fireballs which keeps me observing all the time. Thank you very much and I'll catch you in the next one.